Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. How I recovered from my eating disorder. I posted a video a few months back. I will link it here. It basically was how I recovered and kind of more specifically my journey, but I wanted to dive a little bit deeper and talk about some major mindset shifts that I had to adapt and rewire my brain with essentially that helped me overcome my eating disorder. I do also want to say the little bump in the video is my baby bump. I am 36 weeks pregnant, so we are on the final stretch. And if it sounds like I can't breathe, it's because I can't. Um, so if you see me shifting around a lot, or if you're distracted by the bump, I'm not sorry. Also posted a question box on my Instagram. My tag is here at Kate Fitco. Um, and I talk a lot about my eating disorder recovery and some mindset shifts, give you some pep talks, some workout motivation, some food ideas, so make sure you check that out. You would not believe the amount of women that reach out to me on a weekly, even daily basis, telling me that they can relate with my story. There are so many of us that either have a poor relationship with food or have dealt with an eating disorder in, to some extent. And I honestly would not wish it upon my worst enemy. It was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through. Um, but I truly believe I went through it for a purpose. I truly believe that I recovered the way I did so that I could help inspire, motivate, and uplift others. I do also want to give a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist. Um, I have seen a nutritionist um, and a therapist in the past with my recovery. My recovery was a lot of trial and error, but at the end of the day, it was all on me. I had to take ownership of that and take responsibility of that. And I had to come to the hard reality that not one person or one thing or one book or one program or therapist or whatever was going to fix my issues. I kind of took it on myself and that was actually really empowering for me and that's where I started being able to actually apply a lot of these mindset shifts. So I just want to give a disclaimer. This video is just going to be a tool for you to use. It's not going to be like a how to fix your eating disorder. If it does, great. Please let me know. Let's jump into the video. And also I'm going to answer a few questions that I got. I posted about this asking if you have any specific questions related to eating disorder recovery. So I'll get to some of those throughout the video. So let's get into the video and some major mindset shifts that can really help you in recovering from an eating disorder. But we have a good time here. We have a lot of serious content like this. That's a lot of self-help. Um, but we also laugh, we clean, we cook, we love interior design. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of that kind of content. Okay, so one of the biggest questions, I got this a lot actually, but it basically was to the extent of what was the major turning point or what was your aha moment with your recovery. There wasn't just one moment, there were a lot of little moments um, within my daily life and little lessons that I had learned. I would reapply and reapply and I would fail and I would reapply again a lot a roller coaster basically with an eating disorder or really any sort of like addiction or OCD is you're really just trying to rewire your brain. It takes time and it takes reapplying what you've learned consistently. My first mindset shift, switching my mindset over to gratitude. It sounds really cheesy and cliche and I hated this kind of therapy work but it really works. Every morning, I write down what I'm grateful for, and nine times out of 10, I say I'm grateful for my body. Rather than just being like, looking at all the negative, I cultivated more gratitude, and with that came more positivity. Um, and I really do believe there is so much power in shifting your mindset from shameful state of mind to really just being grateful for what your body does. Like, I treated my body like complete shit, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And my body has carried me through all that time, all that yo-yo dieting, all that like mental belittlement and negativity. 
And now I'm pregnant. I'm, car I'm literally carrying life inside of me. So with the gratitude came a lot of like self-love. And I know that's very cliche. I know that's thrown around a lot. But just try it. Start making a list of what you're grateful for. And it, has, it doesn't even have to do anything to do with your body or your physical looks or how you ate or anything because that's not tied to your worth. But just start listing other things you're grateful for um, in your life because there's always a silver lining when things were really shitty. For example, I used to be in this like very vicious cycle, right? So I would tell myself, Ugh, tomorrow I'm gonna eat better. And then I would fail every single day. I'd fall flat on my face. We don't meet our expectations because of our habits or because we're shameful or this, that, and the other, we're stressed. And we fall back into, you know, the habits that we're trying to get rid of. In those moments when I just kept running into the wall, feeling like I was never getting it, I kind of had to just be like, what lesson am I supposed to be learning? Like, I keep making the same mistake. So what is the lesson in this for me? What do I really need to focus on? Because focusing on eating a certain way or eating good or adhering to a diet was not helping me. It was not serving me or teaching me the lesson that I needed to learn. And that's why I kept binge eating, purging, overeating, restricting. Like that's why I kept being in this vicious cycle and waking up every morning being like, I have to be better today. And going to bed every night feeling defeated and like I failed. Start asking, what about this eating disorder is serving me? Why do I keep falling back to these same habits and patterns that I know are not good for me and I want to get rid of? So for me, the lesson that I needed to learn was first of all, I needed to acknowledge that the numbness and the high and like euphoric feeling I would get from binging and then purging was serving me. It was actually a coping and protective mechanism that my brain was utilizing. And a lot of it was due to anxiety and anxiety around food specifically. I remember my mom's and no one would be looking and she'd have a fresh sheet of cookies and I'd be like, don't eat the cookie, don't eat the cookie, don't eat the cookie. I made myself a bad person for wanting the cookie. I went for the cookie and I was so stressed and guiltful and shameful, extremely like anxious while I'm eating this cookie that I'm not even like enjoying the cookie. I'm just like putting it in my mouth and being like, you're an awful person, you're eating a cookie, you said you weren't going to. And then it's like, you're not mindful or savoring the cookie and you're so anxious, your brain is like, ah, like I need a release. And so the cookies are there Let's just numb out and keep eating all the cookies until we're so full, we're so numb that we can just kind of get a break from our brains. And then I would feel like shit and I would go and purge or just be so mentally hard on myself and restrict the whole next day. So just understanding it was serving a purpose, eating that food, even though there was one part of my brain that really didn't want to. There was like this reptilian part of my brain, this like instinctual part of my brain that was like, please just stop the noise and the anxiety and do something to soothe you, just even for a moment. The mindset shift I want you to develop is switching yourself from the victim to the victor. It's so easy to get caught up in your own problems with an eating disorder. It's almost like the more you focus on it, the worse it becomes. I would get to this point where I would just be like, no one has it as hard as me. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. My therapist doesn't understand. They've never had an eating disorder. And it was always like me, 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 poor me, poor me, my body, my food. I need to look the best. I don't look the best. Like I was so inner focused and I started taking my small, simple wins that I would have every day um, and like giving myself a big like, you're the best, you did it. And I just kind of got out of my own like selfish thinking and like even if it didn't have anything to do with an eating disorder, I looked for ways to serve and help others just to take my mind off of my eating disorder. For one, get my mind off of my problems 
um, and two, realize that like I'm capable and I can still help others and I don't need to be in this victim, poor me mentality because it's not getting you anywhere and it's keeping you stuck. Mindset shift is to ask the question, why do I feel I'm not worthy or good enough if I don't look or diet or work out a certain way? So I really want you to process and journal through that because the truth is you are worthy if you are here today alive and breathing and you made it another day you are here for a reason you don't need to figure out that reason but you do need to realize that your worth is not in your weight and it's so hard to combat this mindset because i know like with social media and filtered pictures and edited photos um, and comparison that it's so hard to see beyond like the pretty face and the perfect body. I mean, it's only human nature that we kind of internalize that and think I need to look like this or I need to be X amount on the scale or I need to burn X amount of calories or eat certain amount of calories to be good. And I would just really encourage you to try and figure out what's that coming from. Why don't you feel worthy as you are? Because honestly, you cannot change unless you can accept where you are right now. Okay, and then along with this, I just was writing some notes as people were sending in some questions and some things I wanted to address in this video. So I want to read what I have in my notes just because I will watch it if I try and like memorize it. If you're getting complimented at a certain weight or size, you're afraid to change that because human nature, we like that praise and we like that validation. I encourage you to shine your light, shine your worth, show your worth beyond just how you look. Write down in your journal or maybe make a list on your phone or mentally just create a checklist of like all the things you love about yourself that have nothing to do with how you look. I know that culture and society and people's comments make you feel like you have to look a certain way to be worthy. I still to this day have to remind myself that I am loved, I love myself, I am worthy enough regardless of how I look because I am a friend, I am a daughter, I am a wife, and I am a mother. And I'm so grateful for all of that. Okay, the fifth mindset shift or like aha I want you to remember and develop is you do not have to look a certain way to be categorized as an eating disorder. If you have a poor relationship with food or weird eating habits, I don't care what it is. You do not have to be stick skinny or super overweight. I will tell you I went to Center for Change. It's a rehab center here in Utah. And there were women of all different sizes and shapes I want you to know that your eating disorder is valid. You do not have to be a certain BMI or weight or have been admitted to a rehab center to qualify as having an eating disorder. You cannot recover from an eating disorder if how you look is your main focus. You do have to kind of have a surrender moment where your goal and your mindset shifts from I need to look a certain way, I need to eat a certain way, I need to... You know, all the roles, you have to let them go. You need to just be worried about recovery. So if dieting and food manipulation or body manipulation is your focus or at all in the picture, I just want to reiterate, you cannot recover because recovery needs to be your number one priority and focus. And in order to do that, you kind of have to let go of all your food roles, exercise roles, all of that. Now, with that being said, that does not mean all or nothing. I used to be that way. I used to be in this huge limbo with macros specifically. I started counting macros with a coach because the coach preached online. She wasn't a nutritionist. She didn't have a degree in dietetics or nutrition, um, but she preached online. She said, I counted macros and that saved me from binge eating. And I thought, oh, here's my golden ticket. That made it worse for me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it's gonna make it worse for everyone, 
but it made it worse for me because it made me way more focused on food. If you've ever counted macros, you know you have to like weigh out your food, plug it into your fitness pal or whatever app, and it's time and mind consuming. And I put all my worth into this, like how I was eating, and then one day I slipped up and I way over ate my macros, and then I restrict and I went back to that like binge restrict purge cycle. That's when I kind of like had this like, well, what do I do? Do I count macros or do I just eat all the things? And I felt like it had to be black and white, all or nothing. Like I felt like I had to choose between the two. It does not have to be in the black and white, you guys. Please ditch the all or nothing. It doesn't have to be, oh, I can't have fitness goals. Oh, I'm pregnant, so I'm just gonna eat all the things and like not care about my body and like I'm gonna gain weight anyway, so I may as well just eat a bunch of shit. <laughs> and then when I'm done having my baby, I'll go prep for a bikini competition. No, that's swinging the pendulum and you're gonna rebound from one side to the other and that's not what we want. When we have an eating disorder recovery, we want the balance, we want that sweet spot. So <clears throat> you've gotta find what works for you. I know for a lot of women, recovering macros does work for them. For me personally, it just made me way more hyper-focused on food. So find that sweet spot, find that spot where it does not have to be all or nothing. Find your gray area. For me, it was intuitive eating and not focusing on the food and just kind of surrendering and letting my body over time, like I mean years, guys, <laughs> over time learning to trust my body and its hunger and fullness cues. I thought for the longest time, that I would have to choose between being healthy versus having a good relationship with food because in my mind, I thought dieting made me worthy and good. I thought dieting made me healthy and skinny and that skinny equals happiness and health. I was so, so wrong. So for me, what helped me with this is, you know, just being educated and knowledgeable about the foods I was putting in my body and feeling empowered that like, I had the choice at the end of the day and I didn't have to follow anyone else's rules or anyone else's diet. But it's not wrong to look at labels and like, you know, be at least aware of like the sugars or the ingredients. Also coming at it from a place where it's just like knowledge is power. And so I'm taking like, you know, these foods into my home, but then let's say I go to my mom's and you know, again, she's made the cookies and I love her chocolate chip cookies. And then I allow myself to have a couple and I don't know the nutritional value of those. I don't know the macros and I savor it and I enjoy it and I move on because it's just food and I enjoyed that one, maybe two cookies, not the whole sheet cake. It was not always like that. It wasn't like this quick shift. One day I was like, I'm going to eat really balanced. I had to learn what worked for my body and it took a lot of time, trial and error. So I guess my last tip is just be so freaking patient with yourself. Recovery is not linear. You're going to have days where you feel on top of the world. You're going to have hours, like 12 p.m. You're like, I'm doing so good. I feel so good. Then something happens and you might fall back into old patterns. Give yourself grace and get right back up on the horse and implement these mindset shifts so you can rewire your brain. Stop focusing on the food. Stop thinking that another diet is going to fix you. Stop thinking that a certain workout program is going to fix you because it's not. It's only fueling your eating disorder. I promise you that. So you have to kind of surrender. That doesn't mean throw in the towel and eat all the things and stop caring for yourself, but approach it from a place of, I'm grateful for my body. I'm grateful for my life. This is not about how I look anymore. This is about recovery. And I promise you'll feel so much more empowered. I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, please leave me a comment down below if you like these types of videos or if you have any more questions specifically related to eating disorders. Truly am so passionate about this subject and helping others. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.